I wondered, where do I want to go? What do I want to do? What do I want to be? Is there a different purpose? Or is this my focus? And then I made it to the center. I couldn't sleep. My head hurt and it had for two days. I lay in bed, relaxed, praying that restful slumber would overtake me, yet it refused to join me in that beautiful, cradled, cocooned space. My body was totally relaxed. It was in on the hope for sleep. My breathing was nice and even. While occasionally shallow, it was ready to drift off. And my eyelids were heavy. The eyes were definitely studying the back of the eyelids in hopes for that restful slumber to come and join me. <laughs> it seemed like all avenues were go to rest. My mind was blank and then it wasn't. I started thinking about the pottery that I had thrown and I hadn't checked in on it for a couple of days and I was worried that it would be too hard for me to be able to trim in two more days. So I needed to get out there and I needed to check in on it and maybe rewrap it and adjust it. And I knew that I needed my AirPods for a meeting the next morning and I wasn't sure where they were at. So laying there, eyes closed, I checked in and I could see them out in my podcast studio. So I thought, all right, at least I can pick them up in the morning. Not too worried about it. But my mind wouldn't stop. It kept ruminating on these two things. One o'clock in the morning really isn't the time to go traipsing across the property, is it? I guess it was because in a groggy, <laughs> dreamlike state, I found myself pulling on some sweats, putting on some slippers, and heading out the front door into the crisp night air. Now, we live on a property that has about five acres and it came with some outbuildings and one of them was a horse arena. So we call it the arena and my pottery barn is out in the barn and my podcast studio is out there, which meant that I had a nice little walk ahead of me to go out and check the things that my brain would not shut up on. So as I walked out, there was just enough light to see by. My brain was very grateful for this fact because with the headache that I've been having, the less light, the better. It didn't need a flashlight. The moon illuminated just enough. It was calm that night. It was so calm. There was no wind like there is today. There were no other noises, no cars driving down the street. I was just enveloped in this peaceful space. The only sound was literally the sound of my feet on the gravel driveway as I walked up to the arena. So I enjoyed the uniqueness of the state of things. Went into the podcast studio. My AirPods were right where I had left them. Walked into the pottery barn and I dealt with my stuff. It was not too dry, so it was perfect that I had checked on it in that moment and I wrapped it a little tighter to keep it at the right level. And as I walked out of the door, I thought, great. Now I'll be able to sleep because I took care of the two things that were most on my mind that I really felt I needed to deal with. So then I started walking home, back to the house. Again, only my footsteps keeping me company. And I thought I would head to the house, but I suddenly felt this intense pull to go over to the labyrinth. So I gave in. I knew that if I went home when I had that pull, <laughs> I probably wouldn't sleep. So fairly soon, 
found myself standing at the entrance of the labyrinth. Wasn't quite sure why I needed to be there, and yet it gave me an opportunity to ask the question of, what message do my guides in the universe have for me right now? What is it that I need to listen to and act upon? So I began to walk, weaving my way back and forth along the path. Two of our barn cats came and kept me company as I walked back and forth and around, listening to each step, the crunch beneath my feet, one after another, after another. I thought about my business. I thought about the lives I've been blessed to be a part of, the people I've been able to help, my family, my friends, acquaintances. I wondered, where do I want to go? What do I want to do? What do I want to be? Is there a different purpose? Or is this my focus? And then I made it to the center. And as I stepped into the middle, I turned around and I looked up. And there's this beautiful blanket of stars above my head, providing light. They were so bright. There was the tree, so still and protective in that moment. It was so peaceful, so calm. The crisp of the air was slowly seeping through my sweats, and yet it wasn't cold. It was more like an enveloping comfort. I could not believe how quiet it was because I don't know the last time that I've ever heard that kind of silence. No cars, no wind, no birds. Literally, silence. It was dark. I really don't know the last time I experienced something like that. And to tell you the truth, I'm not a night owl, so I really don't know the next time that I'll be up at one o'clock in the morning to go out and walk around on the labyrinth and there won't be wind or there won't be cars or there won't be anything else. The cats kept me company. It was almost as though they were sentinels watching while I walked through my little journey. There was a part of me that really wanted to stay out there forever. There was this part of me that wanted to bask in this new experience that I wasn't sure I would enjoy and yet I loved. But of course, eventually you have to go inside. Eventually you need to get some rest so that you can redo the next day. So I headed back in on my little trek out in the middle of the night. It was a delightful experience and reminder. While one part wanted to stay out forever, another part was already writing this musing, aware, inspired, and at peace. Mm -hmm.